So here we are again today for another oil and co-wax medium painting. Uh, today we're going to do more of an more of what I typically uh, paint, which are atmospheric landscapes. And um, I've got my palette set out ready with some cobalt violet hue, cadmium red, titanium white, and some ivory black, and of course my co-wax medium. So I just thought I'd um, just mix this up here, and then we'll get going. So. Um, in my last video, I mentioned that I do about 30% cold wax medium. I, I don't know, I've been looking mostly, I'm thinking maybe 40%. <laughs> um, I think it's slightly under 50. Um, I'm not consistent though. And obviously, it's just I'm just judging by eye here. It's about, you know, those sorts of size blobs. I'm not getting too technical. <laughs> those sorts of size blobs and a small amount of cold wax medium to go with it um i'm just gonna put some of the white here so i i'm obviously i'll keep the rest there because we don't know how much how many more colors we're going to need so it's a bit tricky to film both the palette and the canvas so i'm going to put this to one side but um you can see what i've put out there and i've got my canvas paper here which is taped off ready to go so what I'm going to do to start with is just fill the entire canvas with what will be the sky. And obviously the end is not going to be just sky. But I want to start with that and then go on top of the sky with the composition. So the sky is going to be made up primarily of um, white. But with some of that ivory black in it to create a little bit of a grey. And then later I'm going to go back over it with some red tones and then going to add back in more white. At least that's the general feeling. So I'm just going to plonk this again, another technical term. I'm going to put this uh, lovely titanium white and uh, ivory black down um, with my plastic palette knife. I keep my other palette knife for just of the cold wax medium and then of course I've got my catalyst wedge here which still isn't looking particularly clean so all I'm doing going to do here is just try to cover this canvas um, I like the grey look here but obviously the sky is going to need a lot more than this to have the character but it's just a nice way of just getting the background down first So that's fine for a minute. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the, the red and obviously some cold wax medium as well. And I'm going to add a bit of the white and have a, I keep on using pink at the moment. So this is this sort of a, like a kind of a rosy pink, which I'm going to also uh, cover the background with. So we've got this nice grey and rosy pink um, mixed background which I like. I'm not going to worry too much about the bottom because I'm going to be going over there with quite a different colour in a moment. I must remember to go to the edges. I like using this canvas paper because when I use the wood panels, I seem to spend half my time just tidying up the edge and having loads of co wax media and oil mixture built up on the edges, which is really messy. Whereas here, as long as you just go up to the edge, I mean, there is a chance that it'll bled through. We'll see. Generally, it just feels much easier when you're painting, you just go over the tape and it just feels nice right I like that already so i'm just tidy up down here a little but the composition i'm looking at is a really straightforward lower rise and one sort of kind of come from in where i am here and then down sort of that kind of thing so coming from the right down raised on the right and then ending there that's going to be the composition so this is why i really want to get a lot of the sky done because what I find is otherwise you 
get your composition and your land sort of in the foreground and then you get you want to add more to the sky but you know then you've got this lovely line here but you're going to sort of mess it up by coming down too low with the sky but if you don't come down low enough with the sky then it's obvious that you've like stayed away from that place um so i've learned from experience get the sky done first particularly low down where i'm not going to want to be smoothing over again once i've got my foreground as i want it because you just end up going around in circles you cover the foreground with the sky add more foreground need to do add more sky then you've lost your foreground and it just goes on and on like that which is annoying so i'm gonna keep it like that for the minute um what i'm gonna do i think thinking as we do this is just add add half the foreground then we'll go back to the sky then we'll go back <laughs> to the foreground so like this foreground i'm going to do in a sort of um to start with anyway yeah it's not going to stay this color this is um the purple that i put out which is quite nice with some red just you know thrown in um, yeah, I'm just scruffing it up a bit, making sure all the white's covered. Uh, yeah, that that is a general idea. Let me just clean this cat uh, catalyst wedge. You may want to go a bit higher so i'm gonna do even more here I'll go a little bit up and down and then i'm gonna pull that across like that just to smooth it down a bit and then okay quite like that but now already the sky is looking way too pink so I'm going to go back to the sky in a moment with the white that I'm mixing up now, but it has got a bit of purple in it because I haven't cleaned my palette knife well enough. So I'm going to just give a sense of cloud. Very rough, which is the fun bit. And take this and now just gotta be careful at this point not to over blend I always like the clouds when they sort of like this and then I, I use the cactus wedge before I know it they've gone again I like quite a active looking sky don't I, I try not to over smooth it's very hard I'm thinking we're going to need a little bit of something new. That bit doesn't look right to me. So I'm thinking something a bit bluer in the distance there. So but keep that in mind. And just tidy up there. And I'm going to lightly go across because that gives it then that smoother look. We'll see. Don't like that there. I don't like that there. But I do like everything else. So I'm going to very lightly. Sometimes I go horizontal and vertical just to have that variation. So it doesn't look all these horizontal sweeping lines. I quite like that though. So I'm, I'm hesitant. So this bit here. I'm thinking... If I get my purple, a, a tiny bit of purple, and mix it in with the white. If I can create a sort of a, a lighter coloured sort of mountain or some rocks, some sort of land jutting out there in the distance, which looks okay, maybe too light. 
trying to get the sense of depth here but also you know how 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 light would it be by this distance you know we've got to judge it i judge it with the eye quite like that maybe that it needs a little bit of light at the top here if we blend in a minute um but equally then it would need a little bit of dark right at the front. Maybe darker here and then. So we've got almost like three layers of of um, purple. Um, so you've got the lighter and then the darker and then the middle, the middle values. And then the very dark here, which might need actually more black in here soon. We'll try that for a minute though, because we need to do the catalyst wedge work to really get a sense of how it looks so yeah I quite like that um, yeah that's working for me I think now again, my tendency is to go to blend it all, which can and cannot. Somewhat, start again. Does doesn't sometimes work? I've forgotten how to speak. Finding it hard to speak and paint. I'll get better at that. Right, I like that. I don't know if I want to blend it. I might just try and change some of these lines. Hmm. See, this is my problem. I already like it, and I don't know if I'm being hasty. Don't like that. I use these little, um, little brushes sometimes just to do a little tweak. And I think I might come down one here. Oh, no, don't like that. Go across again. Hmm. It's this big here that's annoying me. Hmm. Let's use a bigger brush just to just to smooth some of that off, and then we'll and then we'll use the catalyst wedge just to blend it in. That's better. Hmm. Do I do a light one? Oh, let's try a very, very light one just to take some of the some of the chunkiness away. Not too much. <laughs> just adding a little bit of texture here. And trying to break up some of the uniformity. It's good to use different tools because otherwise everything can look quite similar like you know these sort of slightly diagonal marks here but as I want to just slightly change them the variation just obviously the eye likes to see change it likes to see rhythm harmony you know, so certain things repeated, but not enough, you know, not too much, not too much balance, contrast, you know, there's all sorts of things to bear in mind. So there's enough there to be consistent and harmonious, but at the same time, enough variation to, to be interesting. I probably need a little bit of something more, yeah. So I'm just doing some different different move marks really or different strokes I'm trying not to repeat too much there's that little bit there that annoys me it's going up again they didn't with this they didn't uh, it's just how it looks to your eye at this point what is catching eye? and sometimes you don't know at this stage of the painting, it'll be something you might need to come back to 
as the days go on because I find sometimes they'll be it looks fine and then a day later there's something nagging me about the painting for the minute let's just do an unveiling I love taking the tape off let's see what it looks like and a quick little landscape more pink again which I'm obsessed with at the moment I'm pleased with that. We'll see how we feel about it as the days go on.